Every second of every day, countries fiercely compete on everything from muscles to scientific research. A tiny economic fluctuation or single word change in regulation is enough to determine who does business where, and ultimately the power of nations. But while all of this is happening, countries turn around to give away billions of dollars in foreign aid. Money that could have grown its economy or strengthened its military. So why do countries give aid, and how can we make sense of who gives money to whom? Do countries have an Alfred Nobel moment of guilt, sending reparations for their misdeeds before quickly returning to cutthroat competition? Of course not. Like everything political, the assumed explanation should never be kindness or carelessness, but rational and selfish calculation. The reason aid exists explains why it's so ineffective, even in the largest amounts and with the best intentions. The first thing to understand is that foreign aid is really a trade for policy, with the benefit of appearing more like charity. Sign this treaty or support this war and your money will keep on coming. Of course, trade is not inherently a bad thing. If one country wants something from another and they agree on a fair price, who cares if it's disguised as foreign aid? Everyone is better off. But this kind of trade is different, because it isn't country to country, but leader to leader. This is the mistake that so many of us make. If you think about politics only in terms of countries, you'll miss the forest for the trees. Politicians make deals, not citizens, and their interest is first and foremost staying in power. Foreign aid deals are made when one leader wants another leader to do something unpopular in the second leader's country. All else being equal, a leader wants to please his population gaining votes or, more likely, avoiding revolution. So if the policy were popular, he wouldn't need convincing, he would just enact it. A good deal is one that makes up for the votes lost and the public anger created by the change in policy. Your entire population may oppose going to war, but if the offer is sweet enough, you will anyway. This is also why aid tends to flow from democracies to dictatorships, and not the other way around. A democratic politician depends on public opinion for re-election, so he needs a lot of money to overcome any damage to it. More money than most will pay. But he does want to buy policies to help him get re-elected. Of course, all on someone else's dime. Because public opinion is mostly irrelevant to a dictator, it can be easily outweighed with money. So dictators make deals left and right. Democratic politicians want to buy policies to please the people, and dictators sell them because the people don't matter. Most people think their government gives too much aid, but it doesn't matter because they vote for policies that it can buy. As we've seen, every leader lies somewhere on a spectrum of how dependent he is on the population. A rich leader doesn't need to negotiate with the people because he doesn't need their taxes. He can sail the seas on a luxury yacht, free from the demands of his citizens. A good country is one where the government needs your taxes and votes, and therefore must obey some of your demands. The biggest problem with foreign aid is how it changes this relationship. When the leader of a struggling country is suddenly handed billions of dollars in aid, his attitude can afford to change. The average citizen has a lot less leverage with his government when it no longer needs his taxes. The more aid is given, the more free a leader is to do what he wishes. I'm sure I don't have to tell you what that looks like. The goal of the aid may be developing an economy or solving a humanitarian crisis, but a smart leader knows how to milk this fact for profit. A country with a healthy economy that's fully prepared for disaster is one no longer in need of help. Dictators are motivated to keep the money flowing, meaning maintaining if not creating problems big enough to necessitate aid. It's not that poor countries can't learn how to store food or build disaster-proof homes, but that politicians have no reason to teach them. A smart leader can turn predictable weather patterns into a global catastrophe if it gets more money. It's an endless cycle where aid intensifies disaster, which creates aid, and so on. Don't let all of this give you the wrong idea. A lot of aid does reach citizens, otherwise charities would stop giving it. It often comes in the form of contracts and economic development, the kind of thing dictators can't steal. But even if 100% ends up in the hands of citizens, it can still harm them. Dictators must provide some minimum conditions to avoid revolution, but giving any more is unnecessary. So when aid reaches citizens, it isn't added to what they normally receive, it replaces it. 
It allows dictators to move the money they previously spent on citizens into their own wallets. This money buys more power, keeping them on the throne longer and decreasing dependence on the population. On top of all of this, corrupt states often apply fees and taxes to incoming donations. Even money earmarked for specific things tends to magically disappear, and suddenly a new presidential palace is built. Foreign aid is not only ineffective, but actually counterproductive to fixing problems. But the alternative is to not give aid at all, even though behind these iron dictatorships are blameless citizens. One solution may be still giving aid, but more strategically. Instead of giving money up front, it can be given conditionally over time. Money continues to arrive only as the quality of life for citizens improves. By giving enough aid to entice the dictator, but only in a steady flow which stops if his behavior changes, the goal of the aid is either achieved or not and the money never sent. Some leaders won't cooperate, but their money will simply be withheld. Better to not give any help at all than give what will ultimately hurt an innocent population. But this strategy only works if democratic politicians use it, and why give up power to help those that don't vote in your elections? Well, hmm.